This is a homebrew magneto that I've built today. I was kind of possessed by the idea yesterday after designing a pulse ignition system for a pyrotechnic device that I've, uh, I've been thinking about for a while. But uh, it occurred to me that uh, I might actually just build a mechanical magneto and uh, give it a go, see if it would work. I used uh, this coil winding, well, it's actually a, an aircraft, model aircraft propeller winding device for those rubber, rubber band models you can get. Um, you may not have seen them, but the, some of the higher class kits come with one of these devices which takes two AA batteries and you can count the amount of turns you're putting on your prop. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually used it to, to wind a propeller on an aircraft. I think I've always used it as a coil winding jig. They're, they're quite handy and they, they used to be fairly cheap, although I haven't seen them in shops recently. Anyway, using that, I wound 2,000 turns on the secondary here of uh, reasonably thick wire, not, not what I'd call really fine wire, and you can see I put a neon bulb across it here for the demonstration. And the primary, uh, I didn't actually count, I just, uh, I think it's about 150 turns on the primary. And I've, uh, I've tinned the ends, and as you can see here, I've um, just brought them into contact so they're touching each other, shorting the primary out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this rare earth magnet towards where they're touching as it approaches the, um, the core, which is just a ferrite rod from the, the junk box. As it approaches that, the magnetic field in the, um, the core will induce a current in the primary, which is shorted, so that the current will ramp up quite quickly to oppose the magnetic field change. And then as the magnet touches the wire, it will break the connection in the primary, and the primary trying to maintain that current will produce a very large voltage, and the step-up ratio will produce an even larger voltage in the secondary, and hopefully ionize the gas in the neon bulb. So, with a few more turns and with a uh, somewhat different lash up, we could probably get uh, maybe optimizing the capacitances and the inductances, etc. You can actually get a spark out of that. Certainly not as compact as a piezoelectric igniter, but uh, not too bad for, for something that's just made out of wire and a bit of magnetic material. I think the. Um, the final version for the device that I want to build will be a, uh, you know, a, probably a MOSFET switch device. But it'll work on the same principle. You charge up the, um, the primary with a current, then you interrupt that current, and you get a huge voltage spike across the, um, across the primary. And if you have a secondary with more turns, you get a larger voltage there, and you can keep the secondary voltage spike to something that's manageable by a device and get thousands and thousands of volts out the other end. Uh, sufficient to create a spark across a gap and uh, dump all of that magnetically stored energy. But in the meantime, this is uh, it's a pretty cute little demonstration of how a magneto actually works. The magnetos are used in all kinds of engines, particularly in aero engines, because they're very reliable. They've only got one moving part, the, the magnetic um, field and the braking, the contacts. Obviously there are magnetos with uh, electrical switching as well nowadays, but uh, they're, they're much simpler than the ignition system that you find in a car, and they find a lot of use in areas where they need to be very reliable. I believe aero engines are actually required to have two magnetos per cylinder, even yeah, yeah, for piston engine ones anyway. Anyway, that's my magneto. Oops. Got one.